And another man gives up what he wishes he didn't have to give up in order to move forward. There were some of those. But most of it was by consensus. And any of you who have watched uh, any of the general authorities functioning have watched that same spirit work. There's a presentation, discussion, sometimes some opposition. And it's discussed and discussed and discussed, consensus, and the spirit will confirm it. I saw that on one occasion when I was asked to take the tabernacle broadcasts, and I, I already was holding down what turned out to be five full-time jobs later at BYU. And um, when I received the call and signed by the First Presidency, I was panicked almost because I was swamped and they were asking me to um, do something that I knew I couldn't do unless they'd let me do what I prepared myself to do. This is a very sacred experience and I'll just share it with you tonight. I went up before the missionary committee, about five members of the Quorum of the Twelve, the members of the Council of Seventy, and um, Brother Gordon Hinckley, secretary at that time, not a general authority. So they said I was to give 13 broadcasts, and they said, um, have you um, an outline? And I said, yes. They said, would you um, present to us what you'd like to do? So I presented to them what I could do and not neglect everything else I was doing. And so Brother Joseph Fielding Smith said, well, that's fine, that's a new approach, and I think that would be very helpful. I'd like to hear it from that point of view. And of course, it's always the same wonderful story of the gospel, but from a different point of view, called Challenge of Our Times. And uh, he said, now let's hear from each of you. He went around the circle until it came to one of the apostles. And one of the apostles said, I, I would like to see Brother Skousen do something different. And he suggested just the, just what I couldn't do without a tremendous amount of time for research. I couldn't do it justice. So I sat there saying my prayers and it went to the next man and he sort of sided with that a little bit. And, and it went on around, came to another apostle and he said, definitely, I'd like to see it done that way. And so it went back to Brother Joseph Fielding and they were all late for their next meeting. And... Um, I was getting a little nervous and I thought that was going to be it and uh, Brother Joseph Fielding said, well, brethren, we don't have our answer yet. We'll go around again. <laughs> so it started around again and he got to this first apostle and to my great relief he shifted back about 35 degrees. It was still impossible for me to do it, but it was closer to home. And the next apostle said, well, I would, I would concur in that, I guess. And it sort of went on around until I got to the second apostle, and he concurred too. And that's when it happened. It was the most beautiful feeling of satisfaction, confidence, well-being, I guess it's the word euphoria, I guess that's the way we describe it. I knew something tremendous was happening and I tried to analyze it. I, I almost felt weightless, I felt so warm, I just knew that whatever was to be done, it could be done. No doubt about it, it could be done. And it was so impressive to me that I looked around at the others and the brethren were all looking down at the table. Everyone was very quiet. And it seemed like a long time to me, but as it got back, Brother Joseph Fielding was chairman, and I watched him, and pretty soon he lifted his head and said, Well, brethren, we have our answer, Brother Skousen, go right ahead. It'll work out just fine, you go right ahead, right ahead. And I knew it was going to work out, I didn't know how, but I just felt confident it would work out. And as we were walking down the hall, I said, Brother Hinckley, did you feel that? He said, is that new to you? <laughs> and, and I said, well, I've never felt it quite like that before. Well, he said, that's what you call waiting on the Lord. And you're going to do all right. Don't worry. You're going to get all the help you need. And I said... Gordon, I feel like I will. Somehow, we will be able to do it. 
So we went back and we didn't have, we didn't handle 13 broadcasts, we handled 26. And um, they were subsequently published in a little book that's no longer available called Challenge of Our Times. Now that's how I learned about consensus where inspired men work over something until the Spirit of the Lord can say, that's it. And when the Spirit says that, you just know that it's going to be all right. And it was. And Brother Richard L. Evans and I worked sometimes at 4 o'clock in the morning to get those broadcasts done, but they were done. When I first came as the president of Ricks College, I attended my first meeting that I'd ever been in watching the general authorities of the church, the first presidency and others running a meeting. I had been studying for the 10 years I was a professor at Stanford how you make decisions in meetings, in groups. So I got a chance. Here's my chance to see the way the Lord's servants do it, of which I now am one. But my first, I, I looked at it with my Harvard Stanford eyes, and I thought, this is the strangest conversation I've, yeah. I mean, here are the prophets of God, and they're disagreeing in an openness that I had never seen in business. In business, you're, you're careful when you're with the bosses, you know. Here they were just, and I, I watched this process of them disagreeing, and I thought, good heavens. You know, I thought it, 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 revelation would come to them all, and, uh, and they'd all see things the same way in some sort of, you know. And it was more open than anything I had ever seen in all the groups I'd ever studied in business. I was just dumbfounded. But then after a while, the conversation cycled around, and they began to agree. And I saw the most incredible thing, that here are these very strong, very bright people, all with different opinions. Suddenly, the opinions began to just line up, and I thought, I've seen a miracle. I've seen unity come out of this wonderful, open kind of exchange that I'd never seen in all my studies of government or business or anywhere else. And so I thought, oh, what a miracle. And then. It was President Harold B. Lee was chairing the meeting. Uh, I think he, uh, anyway, it was, a, it was a Board of Education meeting. And uh, I thought, now he's going to announce the decision because I've seen this miracle. And he said, wait a minute. I think, I think we'll bring this matter up again some other time. I sense there is someone in the room who is not yet settled. And they went on to the next item, and I thought, that is strange. And then I watched somebody, one of the brethren, one of the, I think one of the 12, walk past President Lee and say, thank you. <laughs> There's something I didn't have a chance to say. So I want you to know, the main thing you do about Harvard and Stanford, and I love it, I hope this doesn't offend my wonderful friends, forget it. Uh, we're in another kind of thing here. Uh, uh, this is what it claims to be. This is the true church of Jesus Christ. Revelation is real, even in what you call the business kinds of settings. And uh, a great man whom I love and will always love, President Harold B. Lee, uh, taught me a great lesson that says, no, uh, we can be open, we can be direct, we can, we can talk about differences in a way that you can't anywhere else, because we're all just looking for the truth. We're not trying to win. We're not trying to make our argument dominate. We just want to find what's right. And then a man sensitive enough to sense, without anybody saying anything, that somebody in the room was not settled. <laughs> and uh, again, there's a, there's, a kind of, uh, there's a kind of process of openness and yet coming together and having confidence that you know what the Lord wants, not what we want, that is, uh, I loved Harvard, I loved Stanford, had a great time there, my wife is here. We spent the first 10 years of our married life. I was a professor at Stanford, thought I'd stay there forever, and had tenure, and how happy we were, and then went to Rexburg, Idaho from there, uh, and uh, then came down here and found out that there was a kind of uh, making decisions and working together in groups that I have never seen anywhere else in the world except here.